Hello everyone, this is Professor Horlacher, and we have an example here today of Beethoven's String Quartet, Opus 95. We're going to use this today to talk about the minor scale. If you haven't seen a, a string quartet score before, let's describe some of its distinctive features. Of course, you, as you might guess, a quartet has four players. Over here on the left, we have two violins, both playing in treble clef. And next is a viola, whose register is a little bit lower, and so we here we have need of the alto clef, one of those C clefs, and it puts its C, middle C, right where that middle line is in the staff. And finally, there's a cello part that's even lower, notated in the bass clef. Now this piece has a really exciting opening melody. Uh, this first two bars where you see some yellow arrows pointing as it moves through the F minor scale. You'll see I've shown the key there in F minor. Now one of the things Beethoven needs to do right at the start of the piece is help us know what key it is in. So I have a pretty good sense that this is F minor. I see all four parts starting on F and culminating that melody in bar number two on another F right there. And let's take a look at the viola part. Yes, that third note down is an F, and it's rising up and going down just like the other parts. Uh, this is one of the exciting things a string quartet can do. It can play a melody, the same melody, in a bunch of different registers all at once, and it makes for a very vigorous, vibrant melody. Now, we're going to pay attention to how Beethoven uses the F minor scale. This is an F minor key signature, and I notice that the E and the D are sometimes, and we'll use the violin one reference as a point of reference here, are sometimes E flat and D flat, and sometimes they're D natural and E natural. And so both of those are versions of the melodic minor scale in F minor. Let's try to sing this melody. I'm going to sing it in the, in the first violin register because that's what works for me. Okay, here is F. And I learn a whole lot there about how Beethoven gets us from F down to scale degree 5, C, and then back up to scale degree 1, F. Now when scale degrees e, 6 and 7 are pointing downward towards scale degree 5, let's fix that 6 there, you'll notice that the lowered versions, the ones in the key signature, E flat and D flat, are the ones that are being used. However, when Beethoven decides to move right back up very quickly, from scale degree 5 back up to scale degree 1, he uses the D natural and the E natural, the raised versions. So on the way down, we use the lowered versions. And on the way up, we use the raised versions. And in this case, a raised version will use a natural sign because they're already flatted. So that gives us a good sense of how to get from 1 down to scale degree 5 and then right up back to scale degree 1 in one big swoop. After the melody, I see a chord. Now, how do we spell a 5 chord? Look at scale degree 5 in the bass. That's a, a clue that this is a 5 chord. There's also a G in it, so a C and a G, and we need a third member. There's the viola. Can you read that part right there? It's got a natural next to it, and if I count down, I see that that's an E. So this chord is C, E natural, G. And so that's the final piece of information. When you're spelling the five chord, you use the raised version of scale degree seven, the leading tone. And uh, you'll hear that E natural, it appears in the viola part and also in the second violin part right there. And it moves back to the viola part near the end of the phrase. So notice that it's oscillating from E natural up to F and then back down to E. 
And whenever it's spelled with the C and the G as a five chord, it's an E natural. So now I'd like you to have a chance to listen to this excerpt. 